Only 20 calls. Let, let me know when to advance. All right. Well, I've got mine up and yours up, so that's a little confusing. But in any case, everyone, you know, the, the um, on the t uh, 30 by 2030, there's so many definitions being bull um, bantered around and trying to kind of figure out ways to talk about it. And it was difficult to come up with what to present in this um, presentation, but I'm going to run through a lot of maps very quickly. And really what it's designed to do is to get, get everyone's head around just how much land there is to save and the kind of the magnitude of it. And there's and you'll see properties where it's hypercritical to, to purchase them and some that are a little bit more peripheral and that there's so many gaps to fill. So just to start off with, this is the zone. Oh, can they see my screen, Chris? Or do they see yours? I don't know. Did that slide change? There, yeah. Okay, go ahead. There's so many. Uh, there, in, in, within the zone, there is about 184,000 um, private lands, 194,000 acres of private lands, and about 184,000 acres of, of protected land, excluding the national forest. Just to give you a ratio of what's protected versus not protected right now. Next. And then to get a sense, this is where the work program is in red for the Conservancy now, and, and it's so over 400,000 acres, but that extends also into the Antelope Valley and um, up into the connections between the Angeles Forest and the Los Padres National Forest. Next. And get a, even more of a sense of how where our area could connect to more new areas and expand and how much land there is to acquire to, to accomplish um, ecological needs. This is just an idea of where the work program could go marching northward. Again, just to talk about the magnitude of what there is to protect. Next. And I'm gonna end with the same slide again, but this is just to show a small sample of potential large acre acquisition spread without the, throughout the zone. It's about 21,000 acres of properties that staff is looking into that we're, we're um, uh, talking to owners, analyzing. But this is just a small sample of the many other acres you're going to see in the next the last slides. But I'll end with this slide as the last slide. Next. And I'm going to race through these really quick. This is just how many undeveloped parcels there are in the western Santa Monica Mountains. Next. Again, here in the eastern Santa Monica Mountains, over 6,000 acres. Next. In the Simi Hills, almost 20,000 acres, including going over to the other side of the 23 freeway. Next. And if, you know, if this is posted on the, in the board books, if you want to look at any of these later and blow them up, um, in this area of the Santa Susana Mountains, look at the massive uh, um, areas to acquire, particularly where you see the word Santa Susana Mountains. We're going to show a couple slides in that area in a minute. Next. And in the Verdugos, look how many different parcels there are at the base of the San Gabriels leading on up into the um, uh, north of the Silmar area. Next. And lastly, of these six slides, the, this connectivity across State Route 14 for the Angeles Forest leading to the other lobe of the Angeles National Forest almost 20,000 acres. Next. And so what the tools we have to shape what's going on, how to put our minds around it, what to acquire and how to back it up and how to justify it and to decide what to buy versus not to buy. We've got the LA County significant ecological areas as, as tools or plans. Next. The South Coast missing linkages, wild um, uh, habitat linkages, they're regional. Next. And this is a, just a subset of the National Park Service Land Protection Plan, just to focus on the Eastern Santa Monica Mountains, but that's another uh, ranking tool that identifies key properties. Next. Um, these are already approved conceptual area protection plans that can receive funding from the Wildlife Conservation Board. Um, pretty widespread, so we can move on very quickly. And these represent really the, 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 the caps represent the key areas of connectivity so we're, we're that um, step farther ahead in terms of connectivity with 30% um, by 2030. Next. And then just a, a plan that probably the conservancy members forgot about in 2018, 
uh, this body adopted a um, planning map for the Tierra Rajada Valley, which is sort of an area that needs a lot of work and it's very tenuously put together. You can zoom in on these later if you want, um, but it's just a plan of what we have is for tools to guide us next. And then uh, at the last meeting, this body adopted the um, Eastern Santa Monica Mountains Natural Resource Protection Plan, composed of three other maps it had previously adopted. It's another tool. Next. And of course, well, wherever we have listed species that are known, we have that, those to work around. Next. And of course, all the different joint powers authorities that the conservancy is involved in, all, all of which you see here and what their um, their geographic spread is as a team. <clears throat> Next. And then I'm just going to zoom in on um, all about four or five little areas here just to give you a sense of in the, on the coastal area of the Santa Monica Mountains, how large of a lands gap there is between Solstice Canyon and Corral Canyon over to Zuma Trancus, how many different lands there are to acquire in that area to fill, to fill that in. Next. And one of those is uh, this property in Solstice Canyon where there's a, a begging will, willing seller um, for 80 acres. Next. And then something that's coming down the pike is this property known as the Mansdorf property. It's 1,400 acres. That TPL is very close to locking it up and coming together with funding for it. Um, mm -hmm. They need some additional funding from the state from this budget. Next. And then, you know, we think that we've got the con connectivity from Rocky Peak Park across the 118 into Sage Ranch and into Boeing all iced up, but look at the, the differences in, in the gaps of um, lands that still need to be acquired or protected through conservation easements. Next. And these are some properties we, uh, uh, we've been uh, talking a lot about recently, the Big Sky Ranch and the Poe Ranch and the similar property, pretty much the whole south face of the Santa Susana Mountains um, covering Simi Valley, all potentially can be acquired. That's over 13,000 acres. And then the Butler Ranch south of the 118 for which an EIR for, I think, 25 homes is going to be issued next month. Next. Big picture of Big Sky. It's like another world, Big Sky Ranch. It's just, it's just huge. Next. And then an area that people, a lot of people don't think about is the connectivity from like the Newhall Ranch specific plan, 11,000 acres of open space northward into the Angeles Forest and uh, the Castaic area. It's part of the missing linkages study. Um, that purple pro the purple property looks like TPL is going to be able to obtain that for the MRCA through WCB funding, and the MRCA already owns the top part of Hathaway Ranch, and so that would be a 6,000 acre um, property, um, probably the largest single ownership in LA County remaining, and it will soon be in MRCA hands. But again, look at how many properties there are to create some uh, firm linkages across the five and then down to the 126. Next. Um, really stretching in, into an area where the MRCA does own some property and manage it um, between the uh, Sierra Polona and Angeles Forest northward into the Anno Valley Poppy Preserve. That's an area where there's some great opportunities to work with the Transition Habitat Conservancy. Next. And second to last slide, this is uh, trying to make the Angeles linkage between the two portions of the Angeles Forest. Um, a lot of properties to buy north of the 14 um, to fill in that connection where uh, the CalMAP property is. That's 1,100 acres, which would fill in with the heart of that linkage area. Next. And last, last slide. Again, this is just a smattering 21,000 acres roughly of uh, projects we'd like to work on immediately to fill some of these gaps, the flush out the um, the coastal holdings and the Verdugo Mountains, and, um, and again, those big properties on the south face of the San, uh, Santa Susana Mountains and in the connectivity area between the Simi Hills and the Santa Susana Mountains. So hopefully you got a flavor of uh, wh what we're up against and it's, how, it's hard to choose which, you know, where to go and because the possibilities are, are, are immense at this point. So thank you and I'm happy to answer any questions. Very, very. Uh, would it be possible to email that around? Yes.